So here are some general rules for writing Lewis structures. We're going to find that most Lewis structures are made up of a central atom bonded to the rest of the atoms. A central atom is defined as an atom that is bonded to two or more other atoms, and a terminal atom is bonded to only one other atom. So most Lewis structures will consist of a central atom bonded to multiple additional terminal atoms. And if you think about it, a hydrogen atom is always going to be terminal because it can only be bonded to one other element. When writing Lewis structures, it's very important to determine what the central atom is. And if no other information is given, typically the central atom is the one with the lowest electronegativity. So remember, electronegativity increases as we go up and to the right in the periodic table. So the atom inside of the molecular formula that is furthest to the left and down probably will be the central atom. It doesn't always have to be like that, but when there's no other information given, it's a good place to start. Another general rule is structures tend to be compact, and that's what we mean by one central atom with all the other atoms attached to it. So we tend to avoid long chains, and then we also try to avoid rings. So when we get to organic chemistry, we will find that rings are possible sometimes, but in general chemistry, when we draw Lewis structures, we try to avoid rings, which we typically have a central atom that is bonded to the other atoms in the molecular formula. So when drawing a Lewis structure, once again, you consider the Lewis symbol for each element, then you try to determine the central atom, and then we combine them to give an octet, so we get rid of the unpaired electrons by bonding, and then we check our structure by counting the total number of valence electrons that are put in. We divide by two and that tells us how many electron pairs our answer should have and so we can check our answer. Often in questions that involve Lewis structures, the central atom is underlined in the chemical formula and that's trying to give you a hint. So here let's do some more examples of Lewis structures. So we're going to draw the Lewis structure of CH2O. We want to start with the Lewis symbol for each one of our individual elements. So hydrogens have one valence electron, carbon has four, oxygen has six. And remember we have to put the valence electrons in a specific configuration. Oxygen's gonna want two bonds, carbon's gonna want four, and each one of our hydrogens is going to want one. We then get rid of the unpaired electrons through connecting. We connect the unpaired electrons, and these are converted into bonds between the carbon and the oxygen. In this case, there is a double bond. And as long as we have no unpaired electrons when we are done, typically we have the correct answer. So let's look at Cl2O. Oxygen has six valence electrons. Each chlorine has seven valence electrons. And you can already see, once you get used to doing Lewis structures, an oxygen has two unpaired electrons. Each chlorine has one unpaired electron. So this means oxygen wants two bonds, each chlorine wants one bond, and you can kind of imagine how this is going to go together. We connect the unpaired electrons and turn them into bonds, and as we said, we can take a second and check our answer and make sure that our answer has the correct number of electron pairs. We do this by counting up all the valence electrons that we put into the structure. So we had two chlorines, each chlorine had seven valence electrons, then we had an oxygen, which had six valence electrons. If we add this all up and divide by two, this tells us our answer should have 10 electron pairs. And so we can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So our answer has the correct number of electrons. Let's now look at HCN. So the underline means that a carbon is going to be the central atom. We first look at the Lewis symbols of all the elements inside of our molecular formula. Hydrogen has one valence electron, carbon has four, nitrogen has five. And after a while, you begin to get used to the idea how many bonds each element likes to have. So hydrogen likes having one bond, carbon likes having four, nitrogen likes having three. We then get rid of the unpaired electrons by connecting them. And when we connect them, it turns into a line which represents the two shared electrons. Here we are sharing three sets of electrons and that's why there is three lines or a triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. Once again we can check our answer by counting up the number of valence electrons that we are putting in. 
Hydrogen has one valence electron, carbon has four, nitrogen has five. If we take that number and divide by two, this tells us we should have five electron pairs in our answer. So when we count them up, one, two, three, four, five, we see that our answer has the correct number of electron pairs.